Thanks. All right, so my name is Ben Bush. Welcome to Rhinoceros 3D. This is going to be a bit of an informal uh, approach to doing tutorials because I'm in here with my class. Everybody say hey. Hey. All right, so you're going to give stuff just as live as I throw it out to them. So if I stop in the middle and have to answer a question or yell at somebody or chase a rabbit, as some southerners say, that'll happen. All right, today in Rhino, we're going to discuss the, the main user interface. And sorry for this little glitch here. OK. A lot of people, first, when they open up Rhino, they have an issue with the four screens. And I promise you, the more you use it, the more uh, user-friendly it will become. You have your perspective in the top right. And you can change these views around, but this is like the American standard way of laying out um, graphics. Like, if you were going to do um, a two-dimensional drawing or an engineered drawing, this is how you would typically lay out your your object, top, front, right, and then perspective. You can zoom in and zoom out by scrolling your mouse. So zooming out or rolling backwards, zooms out, scrolling in, zooms in. You can do that for the top, the front, and the right. Um, if you want to move around, you can use the right click on your mouse. So this will pan. These will pan because these are orthographic views. Perspective is a little bit different. You're able to orbit. So I think that's pretty intuitive. We're going to walk through all these icons where you can find them. Because I've taught Rhino for so many years, I typically call out my commands. So if I'm telling you to sweep to rail, I'll tell you to go to surface, sweep to rail. Um, that's just the way I've used it for many years. So let's just start with this toolbar, the main toolbar. New document, and I'll bring a new one just so you know. It's going to ask me what template do I want to work out of? And to be very honest, I'll use millimeters and inches. Um, it bases it around the size of a truck, and it adjusts, the, it adjusts the tolerance. And typically in industrial design, we don't do things larger than a truck. So small objects works for us. I typically do inches because I'm American, and, and uh, I know that sounds terrible. I'm an American. I do inches. Roll tad. I don't say that as a good thing. All right. So I'm going to open up a new document in inches. So new document, open, save, print, document properties. I don't go through this document properties. I usually go through the edit command. Cut, copy, paste. This is all n normal stuff to y'all. Undo. If you don't know if undo is control Z or command Z by now, I don't know where you've been. So that to me is a useless button. Pan, I just told you you can do it by right clicking. It's just, it's fast in orbit, same thing. Zoom in and zoom out. You can scroll on your mouse. I will use zoom window or zoom target. I'm going to use a, a sphere throughout this talk to explain some of the commands. I'm going to change that to shaded just for reference. If I want to zoom in on a target, I select it, it zooms in. Very easy. Uh, another one I like to use is the zoom to object. I'll select the object and hit zoom. Same command, just different ways about doing it. Undo or redo view change. Never used it, but every once in a while I can see how that could be helpful. Let's say I got totally lost in my drawing. So I'm zoomed in too far, zoomed out too far, and I'm just all 10 types of lost. If this happens, you have this icon on top, looks like four windows or a window pane, sets everything back to normal. So if you get lost, there you go. This is a cute little car. Maybe this is like a red Prius or something. If you right click it, it gives you different option of views. So obviously top, bottom, front, right, left, um, perspective. You can use these to set a view. So if I'm on my right and I want a top view, it'll change it to the top. But then I don't need that. My way of changing views is right click the word itself, set view, and it gives you your options. There we go. But I typically like this 
orientation. It's what I'm used to. It's what I like. Reset seaplane. This is this green and red lines that define the origin. Origin is zero, zero, zero. Correct? If I want to show you that, I can location of object zero, comma, zero, comma, zero. And it's going to put it on the origin. You can reset the C plane, but typically I don't like to. I like having to know where my origin is at all times, and resetting it might throw me for a loop. Object snaps. You are going to love object snaps. Um, though I'm not really big on toggling through this menu because, granted, these are very nice icons. If I want the same information, it's located here in my bottom toolbar, if you all can all see that. It's called the O snaps. I had a friend named Nancy, and she said O snap. So this is made just for her. Let me see if I can scoot this up a little bit so y'all can see a bit better. Y'all see these? What do you think N does? Anybody? Right. If I have a line and I want to snap to the end of that line, my end is on. So there we go. See it? A little, little word comes up. Near, anything near, it'll snap to it. Point, if I have a point, so if I have a point there, I'll snap to a point. Mid, any guesses? Mid. Yay, midpoint. Center, which doesn't apply to a line, it applies to a circle. Um, intersection, helpful as well. Perpendicular and tangent, I use those occasionally. I've never used quad. I've used not once and I forgot how to use it. I don't know. I never use it. It's not I'm not saying if I don't use it, it's useless. It's just not in my normal workflow. Um, project object snaps, never used it. S track can be useful if you're doing something that's. Um, more orthographic or more kind of engineering, it shows you guidelines. So if I wanted to draw a square, I can use this as a reference to help me gain some guidelines. Okay. But in all reality, if I really wanted a square, I could come over here to the square and make one. <laughs> so S track occasionally, but not so much. Snaps allows me to snap on the grid. You see how it gets smaller and smaller? That's set by your tolerance. So perhaps I might be right, I might be wrong, but there's four, um, I guess 16 squares in here. Each square represents a 16th of an inch, or a fourth of an inch, sorry. So one, two, three, four, now this is an inch. So this is two inches. Make sense? Cool. I don't like snaps. Ortho, what does ortho do? Think orthographics. Straight line. Yes, straight lines. So if everything wants to be straight, I have ortho on. Now, what if I just want to have a straight line every once in a while? And I don't want to go down there and toggle on and off the ortho. Shift. Shift will give me ortho. It's my modifier, right? So when I let off, I can go in any direction. I hold it. It gives me my, my cardinal direction. The inverse is also true. If you're in ortho and you want to go free, hold shift is your modifier. Planar, never used it. Not really sure what it does. But O-snap. O-snap stays on at all times. All right, I kind of got sidetracked when we were talking about these buttons up here. My snaps, yes. This is a select all button, which if you're savvy enough to use computers, if I want to select everything, what hotkeys am I going to press? Correct. So control A selects everything. So button's useless to me. I've never ventured around with these before, but that looks fun. And that looks fun. OK. Turn the lights off. Who sings that song? Beyonce, Beyonce, you're wrong. Oh, it's a big thing from yeah. Right. No, the lights are fine. Thank you, Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so if I have objects 
and I'm working on something detailed or I'm getting too many objects within my side of view, if I want to get rid of them temporarily without deleting them, turn the lights off, it hides them. I can right click and it brings it back. Lights off, lights on. The lock button, I bet y'all can guess what the lock button does. Put those on lock, so they're visible, but I can't do anything with them. I can't move them or anything because they're locked. I use the lights off, I never use the lock command because you can do both of these through your layers menu. If you're familiar with Photoshop or Illustrator, this shouldn't um, be too much of a secret. I can move this guy, right click, and I wanna change object layer, change object layer, and so if I wanna hide them, I just turn the lights off. How many layers can you have? As many as you want to. Well, do you run out of colors? You can run out of colors, but then you can pull from a color wheel. <laughs> so if you run out of colors, you're doing a lot of layers. I prescribe not using yellow because you, when you highlight, it's yellow. Yeah. Yeah. And so to have stuff that's always yellow would be frustrating. What's next? Object properties. Until we get to rendering, object properties aren't very important. Let me get rid of my layers. <coughs> I can change the material. I can put mapping on it. But we'll cover that in a different lesson. Basic adds a color, a plugin, would add more of a material, but we're not going to worry about that one today. These are different shading options. So now I've gotten rid of my outlines, which I do like my outlines. If I want to change how I view these, these are shaded. I can right click on my word and it gives me all these options, right? Rendered, ghosted. I like ghosted from time to time. I typically stick in shaded. Wireframe, occasionally that thing can really throw your mind for a loop if you get a lot of lines. X-ray, like ghosted, but more intentional. Flat shade, which isn't gonna show y'all anything because we have planar objects here. Um, and that's about it for how to change your immediate screen. What else do we have left? Render button, we'll get that to another day. When you render, you need lights, so there's where you make lights. Options. I can show you how to do the spotlight. I'm not a big fan of rendering. I can show you the, the basics of rendering through Rhino. Its rendering package isn't that robust. You really want something like Keyshot or almost anything else. But I'll show you the basics. If I want to adjust my properties, you can either use this tab or you can go into edit. Can you transfer uh, stuff from here to Keyshot? Oh, yeah. And render it better? Yeah. That's the other way to get to, to object properties. All right, if I change my units, I'm like, ah, oh, crap, I'm in inches, but I want to be millimeters. This is where I can change it. That's about the only thing I really do out of the options menu. All right, so we're done with this toolbar. And everything I have here can be found in the drop down menus. This is a pointer, it points on things, and you can grab and move them. That's not complicated. Um, I know Illustrator and Photoshop has two different types of mice, this one just has the one. This point makes, you guessed it, a point within 3D space and everything else is really, every other command, every part of this program is based around points. So if I wanna make a line, it's not just a line, it's a start point, a line, and an ending point. So essentially there's a point there and there's a point there, but you don't see them. Different types of lines you can make. This is so fascinating, but I've never really used any of these. What's this thing? Points to build a curve through. I never really venture around these curves. So, polyline. I don't really know what I can tell you about that one that you don't already know. Curve line, a lot more interesting. If you want to make nice, graceful swoops, this is how you do it. Of course, there's more options within here. This is an interesting one too. It is a different way to construct lines. Like you have your Illustrator version of making vectors. Do y'all see the difference though? All right, I'm gonna turn these two on so you can see the difference. 
This one is controlling the line by set points, so they're kind of anchoring it. This one has lines straight through it. So the line has to go through the points. This one is kind of pulled by the points. I think I prefer this one because I have more experience with it because of Illustrator, but both of them work fine. Circle, different ways to make circles. Three point circle, two point circle, nothing complicated. Ellipse, a little bit weird to get started with. You can adjust your foci. These arches are useful if you're going for a certain shape. Start, finish, and then adjust it accordingly. You could achieve the same thing with your uh, curve line, but if you want something that's regulated and more articulate, sometimes it's easier to go through the curve menu. Square, it makes squares. This is a fun one because if you would just want to put round corners in without doing it later, it allows you to do so. Let's see, now we're getting to more fun stuff. The polygon. Of course I can do a five-sided one, but no. I can make a star. I don't know. That's a nice button too. The space bar, if you want to repeat a command, space bar toggles it on and toggles it off. So let's change the number of sides. Let's have a three-sided polygon. It's a triangle. There we go. Let's see. Let's have one with, I hope we don't shut the computer down, but 60. It looks like it's a circle. But if you zoom in, you can tell there's a point here and a point here. It's, it's, a, it's almost like pixels, right? Let me go back to normal. If you want to make a plane, you set the points, one, two, three, four, and you have a plane. That'll come really helpful when we're talking about projecting lines or projecting curves. Fillet surface or fillet edge. Let me drop a cube or some remnant of a cube so I can show you how this one works real fast. I want it to fillet this surface and that surface. And it fillets it according to whatever input. I'll be very honest, Rhino is not my preferred program for rounded or flayed edges. If you want to see how I'm making boxes, these are your paranormal solids. These are all really fun. A lot of the issues that I hear from people using rhinoceros is that you can't print out of it, which is a lie. You can, you just know, you have to know how to build solids. These guys come solid because they're in the solid menu. I hope that makes sense to y'all. So if I make a sphere, it is both a, let me turn my flat shading off. That looks really weird. Okay, we're back. It is both a solid and a singular surface. So it allows me to play with it. Same thing with the cube. In reality, it's six surfaces. One, two, three, let me turn on ghosted. Four, five, six. Six surfaces make a solid, but they all meet at the edges. Therefore, it's solid, it's watertight, so we could print that. And there are a host of other things. You have your donut or your torus. These are fun to play with because they come out perfect every time and you don't really worry about them as much. Boolean union. Any guesses on what Boolean union does, anybody? It does. Another thing I really, I, it's not my favorite part about Rhino is there's no history. So I could work, work, work on something and I can't back up under certain steps. So if I want to make a Boolean union between a sphere and a cube, I can do that. Boolean union, this guy and this guy. And it puts them together. You see how the inside's changed? Now it's connected. And yeah, so if I explode this, it's no longer a cube and no longer a sphere. They've been marred by their interaction with one another. So anytime I'm fixing to do something with the Booleans, I like to copy paste and then work on this one. So my history is stored by 
just not deleting. I like to work in a linear fashion, so all my work will go from left to right or up to down, or vice versa. So we saw what Boolean union does, it joins things. What about Boolean difference? Anybody? Yep, the one I want to keep and the one I got rid of. And I don't know why I say that jingle, but it's suck in my head. So the one you want to keep, this one. One I want to get rid of, this one. And now we have, right. You used one surface to cut another one, or one solid to cut another one. I'm forgetting to tell you all a command that I'm doing just because I'm so used to running the program. If I don't want to hit enter on every command, I can right click for enter. So I'll do a difference again. What I want to keep, I'll hit enter instead of hitting the enter button. I'll right click, select, and then right click and it performs the action. What other fun things can we do in the Booleans menu? Intersection. I think I jumped the gun on that one. Let's try that again. First one, second one. And it gives me the intersection of the both. Simple. Mm, we'll get into variable radiuses and variable uh, edges later. Boolean split is nice because if I don't know the output I want yet, I'll click both surfaces and then I can. Oh no, I did the wrong command. Boolean two surfaces is going to write. Is going to require me to right click. Boolean two objects. This one and this one, and so then I can click around to see the different options before I make a decision. Okay. So that is that. Project to surface. I'll deal with that one later. It's taking a, a line and typically if you start drawing a curve in Rhino and you can get off track, you can have it snap to something unintentional. And so I wanted this to be flat, but evidently it is not flat in any way. It's a way to get it back to flat. Mess from surface, I use it very rarely and I typically do it through a menu item or a drop down tab, so that's not important today joining and exploding are totally different than grouping and ungrouping so now I need to make something to display this this theory all right two objects it works similar to boolean union and boolean difference um, mm, this isn't going to work at all. Sorry. Got ahead of myself. So I have a line here and a line here. I want this to be one curve, but it can't be because I made it as two curves. So if I want these two curves to become one, join. So now this is one. I want to take them apart, explode. Similar properties for surfaces or solids. I can explode it, and then I have different surfaces. So in this instance, I have the barrel, and then a cap on the top, and a cap on the bottom. If I want to put them back together, anybody guess what it is? Join, yes, and then they're back together. Join and explode trim and split. I don't like trim because it deletes an input. This is the one that works like Boolean union, Boolean split, but you have to do more work. So let's see. If I want to trim this object with this object, you can see that now I made a trim with this as my cutting object. But it didn't make a solid. It didn't make a solid correct. It just it's still a surface. So if I get rid of that, we're in trouble. 
if I want to have this be an object again, like a, a solid, a printable solid, I have to union. So now it's back to being normal. Join and explode has been covered, so now I'm grouping and ungrouping. This is not join. Uh, if you want to connect two lines that weren't lines, let's get a top view on this. You join. But if I come in here and select both and hit group, it does nothing for me. It appears that they're joined, but they're not really. They're just in the same group. Ungroup, y'all figure out how it works. But then, still the same problem. You join lines, you explode lines. This only keeps stuff together. These should never be confused with actually modifying or changing some of the physical properties of objects or lines or surfaces. Get rid of these for a second. These guys allow you to adjust your curves. And this type of adjustment is obviously different. Undo these. Right click to turn that off. Then these type of curves. I like this gives you a softer curve. Cool. Text button, if you want to add text. The Mac versions don't have it. I'll show you a way around it later. We use text rarely, but it's nice to have and it's fun to play around with. Let's bring that back. Move command. You can do it with your mouse just by grabbing and pulling. But what I really like about the move command, it allows me to position things exactly where they should be. So if I want to place the top left corner of my eye to the bottom left corner of my R, I can do that by the move command. So I either can go here or I can do it in transform move. Once again, all these commands are typically found up here in your drop down menus. All right, so let's move that from that point to that point. And I know it's going to match up exactly. Copy. Two ways to do copy, either using the copy menu. If you want to make a bunch of iterations, it's helpful. So I'm copying from this point to that point to that point to that point. That's helpful and occasionally useful. But if you want to control C or command C, command V, that also works. Rotate just does just that. I was holding shift to give me the 90 degrees or you can use whatever degrees you want to. It also allows you to give an input. So if I wanted to rotate this 15 degrees, it does that. Scaling will scale everything. So you have to kind of set your first reference point and then you can scale up and scale down. Maybe one of my favorite commands in the entire program. But if you don't want to do in all three directions at the same time, you can have more of a two dimensional scale. So I can adjust height and width without adjusting depth. Um, it also gives you one dimensional scaling that's weird. And my least used button is non-uniform scale. It's almost like warping or distorting. I don't want to choose one in the z-axis. Okay. So that's how you adjust things. Is this my project and pullback? Nope. This has to do, let me think, flip direction, running blend surface or lofting, but we'll get that to another day. Anybody have any questions about this, the main user interface?